Photos, I should say. Kara, can you hear that? Great. I just want to welcome everyone um, on this beautiful day, and it's not going to rain because I'm a witch. Anyway, um, I am Susan Holland, and I'm the executive director at Historic Albany. For all of you I don't know, but I think I know a lot of people in this crowd. Um, we, uh, Historic Albany is the owner of the Van Ostrand Radliff House, which we all call, we fondly call 48 Hudson. I'd like to welcome Albany Mayor Sh Kathy Sheen here today, and Tessa Dicker. A representative for the Consulate General of the Kingdom of the Netherlands. They'll speak in a moment about the importance of Albany's uh, oldest building to the city, the nation, and also to the Dutch government, and why we have tagged this project uh, as this place matters. Also, um, elected officials that are here, uh, Assembly Member Jack McEnany, Assembly Member Jack McEnany. I was told that um, the Assembly Members could not make it because they're still in session at the moment. And um, is the city historian here, Tony Alpalka? Is he with us? I do not see him. Um, so 48, 48, Hudson, uh, 48 Hudson's provenance is circa 1728, and that was for the press. Um, as an urban Dutch building showing us today the Dutch culture that persisted even as the e England colonized New York State and the nation in the colonial era. It is a rare link to the foundational history of the United States. Historic Albany recognizes its contributions then and today. There are many in this audience who we must thank uh, for their involvement with 48 Hudson. First and foremost, I would like to introduce Mayor Sheehan, who without her, the building last summer would have been decimated. 50 Hudson next door collapsed, and the mayor and her staff stepped in to stabilize 48 Hudson with the cooperation of the Albany Convention Center Authority. It is stable today and allows us to move forward. Mayor Sheehan. Thank you. You know, every once in a while, you're in a position like I am, right? I'm the mayor of the city of Albany, and you just say things. And I had no idea. I'm not an engineer. I, I don't know anything about building structures. But I was very insistent that this building had to be saved. And it didn't matter how, and it didn't matter who we needed to bring in to do it, because this building is such an important part of the story, the unique story that we tell here in the city of Albany. And it's an important story. It's an important story, not just in the history of our city and of our region, but in the history of our nation. And as we seek to strengthen our relationship with the Netherlands and to continue to explore the richness of that history and the opportunities that it provides for us to have cultural exchanges, to continue to have opportunities for uh, really cross collaboration on, his, uh, on really important cultural uh, issues and projects, it also helps us to spur economic development and business relationships. And so we are really at the beginnings of this relationship, of this reconnection uh, with our friends in the Netherlands. And it's without them, and you're going to hear more about it, we wouldn't be standing here today with an imagining. Because when I would talk about this building, whether it was at neighborhood meetings or in front of the Chamber of Commerce, and I would put a picture up of it, people would scratch their heads. And a lot of times they would say, you know, sometimes things just can't be saved, right? But now with this incredible screen and with the hard work of many of the people who are gathered here for this event, I am more confident than ever that we are going to realize the promise of this building, the promise of this history, and that the impact of that will go far beyond this block, 
far beyond the city limits of the city of Albany and really truly help to amplify the amazing story that we tell and that sense of pride of place that we all know is so important to our community. So I'm thrilled to be here. I'm thrilled to be one small part of this. It took the hard work of many, many people and for Historic Albany to take this building on and to ensure that it is going to be preserved and that it is going to be utilized in a way that allows us to uh, really continue the work that we're doing and cultural heritage tourism is something that is so exciting and it is really a wonderful, wonderful day here in the city that will be, I believe, remembered as the beginning of something that will have a lasting, lasting impact, not just for us, but for our children and our children's children. So thank you, Susan, and thank you to all of you for being here. And thank you so much to uh, our friends in the Netherlands, to the Dutch consulate, uh, the Council General's office, and uh, I am traveling to the Netherlands in September uh, after the primary, and uh, I will be visiting Nijmegen and exploring that rich relationship and uh, talking about spending some time in Amsterdam and, and really having that opportunity to continue this rich and deep exchange. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mayor Sheen. Glad you get a chance to go, too. Um, thank you. Uh, the environmental graphic depicting 48 Hudson's original appearance was funded through a 2016 grant from the Dutch Consulate via Dutch Cultural Culture USA, a division of the government that promotes arts and culture from the Netherlands and the United States. Tessa Dicker, Press and Cultural Affairs Officer and the representative for the Consul Gen Consulate General of the Kingdom of the Netherlands is here to speak to you today. Hello. Yep. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Good evening. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Tessa Dicker, indeed. I work for the Dutch Consulate uh, in New York City, where at the cultural department I'm responsible for the shared cultural heritage dossier portfolio. And in that capacity, I've had the honor and pleasure and delight to meet very inspiring people that, just like we at the Dutch Consulate, embrace the Dutch heritage. Um, I want to raise awareness, awareness about the shared cultural heritage between the Netherlands and the United States. So after the uh, festive Hudson 400 year in 2009, and maybe some of you still remember that year, um, the USA has been designated as a priority country by our Ministry of Foreign Affairs in the field of shared cultural heritage. So, with the overall goal of raising awareness, as what the mayor just nicely put, has an instrument is an instrument of getting people together, but can also uh, um, function as a, a economical driver. Um, so that's the overall goal to raise the awareness. Uh, we started identifying partners, projects, and opportunity, and this started in 2013. And our first focus started in downtown Manhattan. But slowly but surely, we climbed up the Hudson Valley, ending up in Beverwijk, where, of course, Charles Gehring has been revitalizing the, well, what he calls the best kept secret of the United States, the story of New Netherlands, for years already. And we have been expanding our network here in Beverwijk because um, we noticed that you are as proud at the Dutch heritage and your Dutch roots as we are. And of course, the mayor's enthusiasm about the Dutch heritage. And I had the privilege to see you at your office and a lot of paintings of people that reminds us of the Dutch heritage as well. Her enthusiasm, I think, causes so much pride and, uh, and, 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 and inspiration as well. Um, so we have made good friends here in Albany and it's only it's not even been a week that we were with a delegation from the United States and a lot of people are here today as well uh, from Albany uh, to sit we well we were sitting on the terrace reflecting on a very intensive share intensive and inspiring shared cultural heritage week we had in Amsterdam in the Netherlands connecting to new uh, partners, uh, identifying new projects and everything to really what you just said as well, Mary Sheen, uh to start and further and nurture our collaboration. 
we're very delighted to work with Albany, people in Albany. Um, we love working with the New Netherlands Institute, Charles Gehring, New York State uh, uh, Parks with Cordell and Mike Lynch, SUNY, everyone here. And we're actually here also to start expanding our network as well. Uh, and it's wonderful to stand here and to collaborate with, uh, with you, uh, to stand here at the oldest remaining building in the city, which renovation for sure, which you both said, will spark and support local pride um, and will function uh, to further a deeper understanding of the shared cultural heritage between the United States and the Netherlands. And the uh, restoration of this building will for sure is an important element in your new strategy. Um, so we are delighted to add you to our network as well. And uh, the network keeps expanding and we need strong collaborations to, uh, to further this project we're all working on uh, and to revitalize and to rewrite history, to raise awareness about the shared cultural heritage between the United States and the Netherlands and to show the legacy of the Dutch heritage here in Albany the legacy that you are still confronted with every day. From social mobility to coleslaw, from tulips, pinkster, hanging on your stoop that you do here in Albany, I noticed, from an entrepreneurial spirit to kills, and from the remains of Fort Orange to the donut. Being aware is fun, but it's also important. And we think it's important because you can only grow if you know where your roots are. So thank you, and I'm very happy to be here and to be uh, present at yet another amazing new start of the Raising Awareness campaign that the City of Omni is doing. So thank you and good luck because this place matters. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tessa. And we really thank, um, please give our regards to Consul General Dolph. I'm not gonna be able to say it. Can you help me? <laughs> Dolph? Hoogewoning. Okay, I'm going to work on that. And <laughs> Deputy Council uh, General Jan Kennis, who also serves as the cultural attaché. All of them were instrumental in giving us support and continue to do so for this project and, as Tessa said, to our mutual cultural heritage goals. So how did we get here? The list is pretty long, so first I'd like to see a show of hands of all the people that are in this uh, group who worked on this building. There's a lot of them. That's what I thought. <laughs> um, while Historic Albany is the owner, we know it takes a village to raise awareness, raise funds, and raise, friend, raise friends. So the original concept came from Al DeSalvo after a trip somewhere. And then 50, when 50, um, when 50 collapsed and 48 was sitting here, Jack McEnany, former assemblyman, walked into my office and he drew me a picture. Yes, kids, he drew me a picture. And I still have it on my desk if I could find it. You'll understand that if you saw my desk. Um, and he drew a quick re rendering and he did call it a theater scrim. He said, this is what you should do. And he point he's always pointed out to us that in order to get support from the public, we need a visual and how right he is. So the timing was absolutely perfect. A, vi a volunteer collaboration formed, made up of downtown Albany institutional neighbors and members of the city's. This project was completed by, and I'm gonna make you raise your hand if you don't know who this is, Mark Shamming, Deputy Commissioner of the New York State Office of Cultural Education and Director of the New York State Museum, who did the beautiful drawing here. Uh, and Jessica fisher Nidal, University Editor and Director of Local Government Relations at SUNY System Administration, who coordinated, did the public relations, a lot, all the writing pretty much, <laughs> and who kept us all on schedule. Lee Gordon Dixon, graphic designer who did the gorgeous signs of greatness and the oldest building panels. Where are you, Lee? Can you hear? Oh, there he is, back there. Um, Bill Brando and the preservation architects, including Matt Scheidt from John G. Wade Associates, our neighbors, architects who did the research and consulted on every aspect of the design. Georgette Steffens, who had another meeting, couldn't be here today, and the Downtown Business Improvement District to allow this sound sign to be part of the Signs of Greatness, their online project to raise awareness of Albany's rich history and their, its stories. Dr. Charlie Gehring, Dr. Gehring, and Dr. Yanni Venema of the New Netherlands Research Center and the New Netherlands Institute, whose research on contemporary houses in Dutch Albany and New Netherlands informed the design of the rendering. Kara Macri from our staff, 
uh, Albany, Historic Albany's Director of Preservation Services, who worked with the design, research, and all aspects of this room, including the Trump Lloyd painting that you see underneath, including making this day possible. Fa this was fabricated and installed by Alan Brand and the team from AM&J Digital, based in Albany. And also a thank you to the chat leadership, uh, Maeve McEnany with Michelle Bernard from the Albany County Convention and Visitors Bureau, along with the city's Mayor Sheehan's Cultural Affairs Department. So a round of applause for this large group of people. Great. And uh, today also marks the first day of fundraising for our match to the Environmental Protection Fund grant from the New York State Office of Parks, Recreation, and Historic Preservation in the amount of $268,032 for 48 Hudson's uh, Phase 1 to begin our restoration project. We also would like to thank Governor Andrew Cuomo, the, the New York State Office of Parks, Recreation, and Historic Preservation, and the Capital Region Economic Development uh, Council for the grant award. We are excited by the possibility and look forward to work, working with the agencies and all the project stakeholders. The EPF match for phase one is approximately 89,000, and we also have a generous donor already who will match our early, hang on, uh, our early fundraising efforts. For each dollar raised, that individual will donate 50 cents. More about that, that at the reception, which we're all invited to at Lacerre, which follows the press conference. The Preservation League of New York State's uh, president, J.D. Lorenzo, is also here today, and members of his board. And the league was literally one of the first on the scenes to help us with 48 Hudson last summer. So stay tuned for an update on that exciting news. <laughs> Lastly, our team must be thanked and thanked often. Uh, Hartkin Archaeological Associates for the archaeology already completed. I know Wally Wheeler's here. Um, to Jack Waite and his team at John G. Waite Associates, and also to Chazen Engineering from last summer for solving the engineering issues that we had. I'd also like to thank our board, especially George Stafford. Where is he? <laughs> Where is he? There he is. Um, Matt Scheidt, again, from John G. Waite and from our board, and Joanne Duncan for their insight and guidance in this project. Lisa Crompton, Preservation and Program Associate, Aaron Hunt is our Warehouse Manager, and our former Associate Director, Nikki Brown, plus all Historic Albany's board leadership under uh, President Nancy Burton are all also owed a great deal of gratitude. Um, and I'd also like to give a shout out, for those of you who don't know, I don't know how you couldn't because it's everywhere, uh, for the downtown bid for their public art project, which debuts tomorrow night. Um, and I'd also, again, like to thank Mayor Sheehan uh, for the city's support and the Dutch Consul and Tessa Dicker for their support with This Place Matters Public Art Project. Their partnership and friendship supports our efforts to restore and revitalize the Van Oster and Radliff House while promoting our mutual heritage, our shared goals for heritage tourism on both sides of the oceans, and to show the world what, his, what Albany, New York has to offer. Thank you so much. Thank you.